You are listening to a MIDI file being played in FluidSynth using General User GS version 2. In this video, I will show you how to set up FluidSynth in Linux to play MIDI files just by double-clicking them. If you're using macOS or Windows, I have created a version of this tutorial for you. Links are in the video description. FluidSynth currently provides the best MIDI playback you can get on Linux, or any OS at least in my opinion. Now you may have noticed during the playback earlier that FluidSynth runs within a terminal. There are applications that can control FluidSynth via a graphical user interface, such as QSynth, but that method requires a separate MIDI player application, and I've been unhappy with the options I have found, though that is likely to change in the future. Regardless, the setup for FluidSynth is quite easy on Linux, especially compared to something like macOS, so if you follow this tutorial, you will be rewarded with a setup that is easy to use and sounds amazing. Note that for this tutorial, I'm using KDE Neon, which is based on Ubuntu. The software installation step will vary if you are using a distro not based on Debian or Ubuntu. All right, that's enough intro. Let's get on to the tutorial. First of all, you will need a general MIDI sound font to be able to render the instrument sounds in your MIDI files. For this tutorial, we will be using my new General User GS release, version 2.0. To download, open a browser, and go to www.schristiancollins.com slash general user. Scroll down to the download section, and click the link under current to download the latest version of General User GS. Note that this will be version 2.0.0 or higher by the time you're watching this video. Open your file browser and go to your downloads folder. Right click on the zip file and find the option to extract the zip file. This will vary depending on the desktop environment you're using. Here in KDE Plasma, I will choose the extract here and delete archive option and now I'm left with just the general user GS folder. I recommend moving this into a more permanent location rather than leaving it in your downloads. So I'm going to right click and cut this folder. I'm gonna to go to my home folder and I like to put my samples in my audio file or my music, music folder. So I will open that and create a new folder called samples. Go into the folder and we will paste general user GS into that folder. And that is where it will live. Now let's open that folder. And you can see here is the sound font file. We also have three folders, demo midis, documentation, and support. Um, I'm gonna go into the demo midis file. Inside demo midis are a bunch of MIDI files. And inside that folder is an audio folder which contains those MIDI files recorded as audio played through FluidSynth using my recommended settings. You can use these files as a reference point to make sure that you're getting correct playback out of your MIDI application. Now I'm gonna go back to the main general user GS folder and into documentation. This file list will probably look different in the final release, but anyway, find readme.html and double click it. Should open in your default browser. And within the table of contents, scroll down until you see under playing MIDI files, the section called fluid synth and click on it. And here we have installation steps you can follow. The first of course is to install fluid synth. Now most, if not all Linux distributions should have a fluid synth package within your distros repository. How you get this package will vary depending on your Linux distribution. If you're using a Debian or Ubuntu based distribution, Simply go into the terminal. Under KDE, it's called console. And type sudo apt install fluidsynth. Hit enter. Type your password. And it will grab fluidsynth. It'll actually ask my confirmation first. and it's installed. Again, if you're on Fedora or Arch or any of those, 
you'll have different commands to accomplish this. You should see a couple other command options on the screen if you're using one of these other distros. All right, you can now exit the terminal. And now we need to create the fluid synth configuration file so that it can find general user GS. And we are also going to want to customize the reverb and chorus settings for much higher quality playback. Back in the documentation, scroll down until you see this configuration file text in step three. Select and copy. Next, you'll need to open an editor that can edit plain text files. In KDE Plasma, that would be Kate or Kwrite. Usually, if you just search for text editor, you should be able to find what that is. I think on GNOME, it's gedit. In XFCE, it's mousepad, and there's more out there I know. Here in Kate, I'm going to hit New File, and then paste that text I had copied earlier. Next, we'll need to customize this, especially this path, because this needs to point to where general user GS is stored on your computer. I will go back into my file browser and find general user GS, the sound font. Here it is. Now on KDE Plasma, I can right click and go copy location. Depending on your desktop environment, you might need to do something like copy just the path from the path bar. That's usually easy to do on any file browser. And then go back into your text editor. If you copy just the path, make sure that you only highlight this path, including all of the slashes. If you copied the entire file path, including the sound font name, as I did, highlight all of this text and paste. Now, just a quick description of some of the settings in this file. This set synth device ID, this tells Fluid Synth to emulate a Roland GS device, which I find provides better compatibility with the MIDI files, at least that I've been playing. Here we increase the polyphony from the default 256 up to 512. If you're running this on an older or slower system, you might want to drop that back down to 256. These settings here are perhaps the most important for a higher quality sound. Changing the default reverb and chorus settings sounds remarkably better than the default settings. And lastly, we set the sample interpolation to the highest quality. Again, if you're on a slower or older system, you might want to remove this line as it does result in higher CPU usage. Now let's save the file. Click Save. And you want to save this in your home folder, and it's going to be a dot file, meaning it begins with a dot or a period. And then the file name after that is Fluid Synth. This will also make it a hidden file. Click Save. And then that is done. You can now close the text editor. Next, let's test out Fluid Synth, make sure it's finding everything properly. Once again, start up your terminal. Type Fluid Synth, followed by a space. Then, in your file browser, navigate to some MIDI files. We'll use the demo MIDIs here. Drag and drop the MIDI file into the terminal window. That will put its file path onto the command line. Make sure that your terminal is activated and then hit enter and it should start to play. All right, we have sound, so everything seems to be set up correctly. You can stop playback either by typing quit or you can even just close the terminal. Sometimes there might be warnings. Um, I'm not sure that this is, everything is obviously playing correctly, so this can be ignored probably. Um, if it can't find the sound font, there'll be a warning about that and you won't get any sound. Um, so you might just need to pay a little attention to what's being printed on the screen there. All right, so the next step is to have it so you can double click a MIDI file and have it open in FluidSynth automatically. I will show you the easiest way to do that, but I'm gonna create a new tab here. And within the general user GS folder, I'm gonna to go to support. Fluid Synth, Linux, and we have this fluidsynth.desktop file. We're going to copy that into your local applications folder. Navigate to Home, edit the path bar, and add dot .local, hit Enter, and then go into Share, 
and applications. And within here, right click, paste one file, and now we have fluidsynth.desktop in this folder. Now the next step might vary slightly depending on your desktop environment, but I can right click any MIDI file, select open with, and I now have fluid synth as an option. But instead of clicking on here, I want to make this the default, so I'm gonna go other application. I'm gonna search for fluid synth, there it is. Select that and then tick this box for remember application association. Click OK. And there we go, it's working. And so now I can just double click on MIDI files and they will start to play. Note that some MIDI files might take a few seconds to start. For example, JCycle. You can see it takes a few seconds before it gets going. So if you don't hear sound right away, I know um, Earth Day takes a particularly long time before you hear the first note. So if you don't hear sound right away, just give it a few seconds. So that should be it. I hope you were able to follow everything well enough there, especially with all of the different Linux distributions out there. I know one downside to playing MIDI files this way is you don't have playback controls. I will be keeping my eye on a few different MIDI players out there, such as Drumstick MIDI Player. Um, that might eventually become my number one recommendation, but it's got a few issues yet that need to be worked out before I can do that. Either way, I will be updating the documentation from time to time as my recommendations change. So keep an eye on my website and my YouTube channel here for that. So thanks for watching and uh, go enjoy some MIDI files. I'll see you next time.